everybody, it's Rune the Angel Dragon here, and it's been a moment since uh, I went and made a video, so, and I apologize for that. But today, I'm actually going to start my series on talking about fursuits. Now, the thing is, I had this big idea of talking about the different rules and stuff, and the things that you need to consider, and I'm still going to do that, but I decided to kind of take it apart a little bit better and make it a little bit more informative and not all clustered together into one big video if I didn't have to. So today we're just going to talk about the different types of fursuits that are out there. Um, and I just want to talk about those and the difference between a fursuit and a mascot suit and and the lack thereof of differences and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now there, there are some things that are not covered in here, um, which are the hoodies that people wear. Um, my idea of a partial, I'm going to talk about the official definition of what a partial is versus what people think when they think of a partial and if you're paying for a partial that kind of thing so if anything I'm saying is not making any sense <laughs> um, yeah uh, we'll get to it don't worry about it <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get there eventually so the main question that I get is what is a fursuit okay and obviously people look at this and this is a fursuit a fursuit is a suit that is made from a fursona character it's not just a, I mean, it could be just a random animal that you made into a suit. Like if you just take a bear and then make a bear suit, or if you just take a fox and make a fox suit, that's technically still a fursuit. But a fursuit is something that is particularly for the furry fandom. Um, and usually what a fursuit is, is when someone has created a fursona character Therefore, they have made their own personalized character and or adopted a character that they feel represents them within the fandom, and then they have made a suit based on that design. Now, I designed Ruin last, last year, and he hasn't changed design at all, but um, I designed Ruin last year, and I really liked his design, and thus I decided to bring him to life in the form of a fursuit. So, this right here, though I didn't make the head, someone else did. The design, the pattern, the colors used, that's of my that's of my design. So he fits my rec sheet. The reference sheet that I made so that artists can draw Ruin correctly and so that fursuit makers can then make him correctly. So fursuit is the proper term used in the furry fandom for a character that has been made into a suit. Not furry suit. Not fursona suit, it's literally just fursuit. That is the proper term. So the different types of fursuits though, there are different types. You have your full suit, you have your partial suit, then you have the difference between digigrade, which some people say digigrade, but I say digigrade, digigrade, plantigrade, and then there's another one which is called like Unguli grade, yeah. So digi grade, planty grade, unguli grade, and then another type of fur suit is called the quad suit. So first, we're gonna go over the planty grade, digi grade, and unguli grade. So planty grade, planty grade is the most common fur suit out of all of them. Planty grade is what humans are, um, our legs. <laughs> All these different grade things are mostly based, they're all based in the legs. All right, so don't worry about having to worry about anything having to do with up here or up here or anything. No, it's only in the legs, um, as far as I know. So, planty grade is what humans have. We have our straight legs. We're, we're flat footed, you know, technically not considering arch, but it's, it's considered flat footed, straight legged. There's no extra padding. There's nothing to make the legs look more realistic to their animal counterparts. It's basically what just fits our human body, even though we're dressing up as an animal. So, and for us, that's more comfortable because it's not making our body, you know, it's not adding more to what's already there and it's not changing the shape of our legs. So natural human legs is plantigrade and that is the most common in fursuits. Now, Digigrade, it's what's used for most canine legs, um, and it's it's meant to mimic actual feral canine legs, like what legs would look like out in the wild. So a lot of the time, 
you'll see these legs and they've got the big puffy thighs and knees that kind of extend out and then these legs that these legs that extend backwards and then they go forwards and it, it kind of looks like these people are on stilts <laughs> sometimes um usually it's just like the puffy thighs and knees and stuff and then the leg will go back and then the paw comes down and forward and you know it's just it's a very it looks like a very awkward angle and all it is is it's an addition of foam but realistic canine legs are what's known as digigrade now digigrade also encompasses other animals too i don't know exactly which ones i just know that it's most commonly used for realistic canine looking legs now digigrade does often cost extra if you're going to get it as a feature for your fursuit and that is because it does have the extra foam it does take extra time it will require extra fabric and patterns can be hard to lay over because um because of how round the legs are how much they do stick out um, but if you're looking for a more realistic fursuit to a canine character then you would go with digigrade unguli grade is which i don't even know if i'm saying it right but unguli grade is more for hooved creatures <laughs> Um, so things like horses and deer, essentially. That is Unguli grade. So like the Kate, like the planty, or blah, 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 I can't talk today. Like the digigrade, like the digigrade is to the realistic canine legs, Unguli grade is to the realistic hooved creatures in the fandom. And again, it's just an addition of foam, it's placement of the leg, it's you know, ex pushing it backwards, extending it forwards. And sometimes these legs are actually on stilts because if you want your hooves small and your feet are so big, you will end up on stilts that have your leg or have your feet kind of like this and extend forward. And it's a very complicated process. I wouldn't be able to do it. I wouldn't be able to walk that way. Um, I'd say unguli, unguli grades are actually more expensive than digigrades because a lot of the time, like I said, they are stilts and they actually do take a lot more foam and they do take a lot more um, effort in making those. Um, so those are those are pretty much the differences between um, your planty grade, which is just regular human legs as we are, uh, digigrade, which is more for like realistic canine legs, and then unguli grade, which is then the hooved creatures, cows, horses, deers, goats, all that fun stuff. So there you have those. Now, quad suits. Quad suits are something completely different. Think quadruped. Quadruped, four legs. Quad suits are feral suits. <laughs> Your dog. Your dog does not get up and walk on two legs. They might occasionally if they're begging for a treat, but other than that, they really just don't go walking around on two legs all the time like, howdy doody neighbor. They just don't do that, right? So. A wolf, say you have a wolf character, right? If your wolf is obviously on two legs, they are in what's known as an anthro form, right? And if you have a werewolf, then they are in werewolf form. And it's called biped, bipedal form, which means two-legged form, because they are walking on two legs. Quadruped means they are on four legs. They are in a four-legged form. In the furry fandom, this is most often referred to as feral form. This is known as feral art, especially if it's more realistic. Feral, feral art means non-anthro, which means no human characteristics, which means they are as natural as they can be. Um, so a quad suit is, is more for the feral formed furries, because there are furries that do have a liking of anthropomorphic animals but for their persona they prefer to have a more realistic animal and even if it's not a realistic species even if it's like a dragon or you know it's a hybrid or something if they choose to have a character that is more feral that is more natural that is more animalistic and raw and not anthropomorphic then they would get a quad suit which means they would essentially be on all fours their suit looks like it's on all fours I don't know how it works when there's a body in there. I just know that they do have suits where someone is walking around on all fours and the suit is made to look as if it is on all fours at all times and it is a more feral form. That is a quad suit. 
I would assume that a quad suit is much more expensive than a fursuit because it would take a lot more fur, probably a lot more padding, and I feel like there's some mechanics involved in there. Considering I don't see someone walking around on in this arched, weird position trying to pad around on all fours. Um, and quad suits, the quad suits I've seen, they're highly elaborate. They're, they're a lot more elaborate than most fursuits I've ever seen. And because they're more realistic, um, I would definitely see them as being more expensive than a typical fursuit. So that's, that's the whole thing with, um, now you know what a fursuit is, you know the the quad suit, digigrade, plantigrade, unguli grade. So now we're going to talk about full suits and partial suits. Now, right now what I have would be considered a partial because it is literally only a part of a costume or a part of a fursuit. Um, I'll, all I have for Ruin is the head. So that in itself just is a partial. But if you're talking to a fursuit maker, an official partial package comes with a head, hand paws, feet paws, and a tail. So head, hands, feet, tail. That is what is considered a actual partial when you are buying from a fursuit maker. But in the furry fandom, if you have just tails and an ear, that's considered, you know, or ears, not just an ear, that'd be kind of weird. But if you have a tail and you have ears and you're just wearing those, that's considered a partial. Even just wearing a tail is considered a partial. Having hand paws and feet paws, partial. Having hand paws, partial. Having just the head, partial. So in the furry fandom, as long as it's furry, like centered kind of accessories, that is what's considered a partial versus in the business world, when you're ordering from a fursuit maker, a partial is head, hands, feet, tail. So, and sometimes they might do wings if you have wings, but usually they will not. And a full suit, of course, is the head, the full body suit, which has, you know, from the neck all the way to your ankles. And then for your arms, it goes all the way down to your wrists. That's the bodysuit. You So you have the head, the bodysuit, you have your paws, you have your tail, and you have your feet paws. And if you have wings, you'll also have your wings. So that is what's considered a full suit. It's where every bit of you is covered, you are fully in costume. That is a full suit. So full suit and partial. So there's those. Um, but, what's, but a lot of people like to say that fursuits are very much like mascots. Now, they're not exactly wrong, but they're also not exactly right. Um, fursuits and mascots can be very similar. And depending on if you order a fursuit versus if you make one yourself, um, they can be very similar as well. Because new fursuit makers don't always have the money to buy the really good fur don't really know what the really good fur is as far as quality. They don't know what to look for. Um, some people don't want to wear fur. They'd rather just wear something more fabric-like. Um, a lot of people don't want the close-fitting bodysuits. They get something that's more loose on them or balloony. Um, and honestly, I've seen people that make fursonas that, you know, kind of revolve around a mascot character they had seen in the past and or when they make their fursona, it's something very simple so that if they go on a mascot site, they can usually find something that kind of matches their persona. By all means, if you make a very simple, basic design for your persona and you feel as if that connects with you, as if that actually like resonates as you and you can see yourself as that creature, by all means, if you find something similar to what your character looks like in your head in a mascot shop, that they can either make for you or it's available as like a pre-made that's not being used, then by all means, buy it and use it as your fursuit. There's nothing wrong with that. But fursuits essentially are for people within the furry fandom, whereas mascots are obviously used for businesses, they're used for schools, they're used for charities, they're used for all sorts of things. They are not specifically 
tied to the furry fandom, the materials that they're made of, mascot suits tend to not be as expensive. The heads are not made specifically to fit one person, but they're kind of a one-size-fits-all thing. Same as the costumes. The costumes are more of a one-size-fit-all, which means you either look really big in this, or you look really tiny. Um, and for example, I was a mascot um, back when I was in high school, and I volunteered for the Mouse House. I played Miss Mouse, which later on in the video you'll see um, pictures of that. Um, but I was the mascot, I was Miss Mouse. And the thing is, it, it was one of those mascot suits. Um, this was the old suit, and, and it's long been since retired, but it was one of those one size fits all. The head was pretty big. Um, you know, I have a small head, so it rattled around. And then the dress, uh, it was again, it was a one size fit all. I'm a hefty, I'm a hefty girl myself. And so when I put it on, I had the Mrs. Claus, you know, plump and chesty kind of grandma welcoming, sit on my lap and get, let me give you a cookie type thing. And then when the cheerleaders wore it, this dress just went like it shrunk. It looked all sh like wrinkly because it was too big on them. Like, so that's a mascot, you know, it, it's for multiple people's use. It's for businesses. It's to advertise. It's to draw people's attention to buy some product or to watch some game or cheer for some team you know that's that's a mascot but a fursuit is something that is supposed to be meant for you for you alone for your character for your persona and a lot of the times fursuits are made with better quality materials than a mascot costume is made out of mascot costumes are a lot looser um, the eyes a lot of the time, yes, you have good vision, but people can also see in and see your eyes. Same with the mouths. You can look in the mouths and generally see the person inside. The bodies of a mascot are generally not as form-fitting as a fursuit might be. Therefore, they're pretty loose and, and a lot of the time, whereas fursuits can be more realistic, mascot suits tend to be more cartoony for a reason. Also, fursuits are meant to be animals of some sort, even if they're a mythical creature, such as Ruin being a dragon. Even though someone told me he looks like a shark. But he's not a shark. <laughs> he's a dragon. Um, and mascots, they don't have to be animals. They can be a baseball, or they can be, you know, whatever you want it to be. A grenade if you wanted it to, you know? They could be a bicycle, for all I know. Your mascots can kind of be anything you want them to be. A giant light bulb, or... <laughs> something along those lines of microwave. Um, whereas fursuits are generally some sort of animal and are generally covered in fur of some sort. And um, even though some aren't, and I know they're not. And mascots, mascots tend to be made more with like um, either shorter fur or they're made with like fells or something like that. So there is a little bit of a difference between the two, um, but they can be, but mascot suits can be used as fursuits. It's just if you buy a pre-made mascot suit, please be cautious that if they're pre-made, a lot of the time mascot suits are mass produced. There's probably someone out there with a suit very similar to yours, unless you have one custom made for yourself. Um, yeah, and I, I, I don't know. I kind of, I kind of would recommend you not buy a mascot suit from a school or something um, that kind of like went out or whatever, because I don't know. It just seems odd to me. <laughs> I wouldn't want to go around as a, a bee from my old middle school or whatever. I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah. Oh, and when you buy a fursuit, the thing is, there's also a difference between the styles. Like I said, there's toonie and then there's realistic. I have talked a lot about more realistic, but toonie something too. Um, a lot of people like the more cartoony looking fursuits. Those are the ones that children tend to like more people in general tend to respond better to whereas realistic people kind of just look at you like you belong in a sci-fi convention or something ruin here is kind of uh, a mixture he's what's known as semi-realistic um his eyes are not toony um they're more realistic but a lot of things about him like the tongue hanging out and the the rounded teeth and the rounded spikes and whatnot he has more of a semi-realistic style which is what i wanted him to have so this is good um because he fits the design model that i was looking for so he's more of a semi-realistic style 
But it, when you're looking for a fursuit, make sure that when you choose a maker, you're actually choosing someone that fits your style and the image of the character that you want. If you're looking for a more realistic type thing, make sure that you're looking through the maker's gallery and that you're choosing for your character and you're looking through their examples of stuff that they've done that are more realistic. More realistic stuff tends to be made with resin bases. They have the resin eyes and a lot of the time they are made with higher quality materials to make them look real, as in shiny materials to make their mouth look wet and etc. So realistic suits tend to be more expensive because they are made with higher quality materials. Whereas toonie fursuits, depending on who the maker is, they tend to be cheaper because, like I said, they're not made with the resin eyes, they're not made with all those higher quality materials, they're still made with high quality materials, but not the crazy expensive ones. Um, so toonie tends to be a lot cheaper than something that's realistic. Semi-realistic, it's just a gamble, it's a mixture between what you want to look real realistic and what you want to look toony, and how it all blends together, which will create your price. So, the final thing I want to talk about is something that exists in the fandom, whether we like it to or not. Now, a lot of furries kind of try and say that there isn't that darker and sexual side to the fandom, but there actually is. And there is a type of fursuit for those that consider being furry a fetish. And those are called mersuits. They are not called fursuits. They are called mersuits. They are not called yip suits. They are called mersuits. So, the difference between a mersuit and a fursuit is that a fursuit has no openings other than maybe the mouth. But mine has a net. Um, a fursuit will have an opening maybe in the mouth so that the wearer can drink water or eat food. And other than that, the only openings that this has might be the nostrils, might be the ears for ventilation, but then you have your zipper to get out of the suit and that's it. A mersuit obviously has extra places that are open for certain activities. And you do not need me to tell you about those because I'm sure you're old enough to get it. <laughs> and I hope you are. If you're not, shame on you for still watching this video. Um, and shame on me for letting you. Um, so there are mersuiters in the fandom. And while not all of them are like this, a lot of mersuiters are known as being the fursuits that have a full suit, but then they're, they're wearing like a pair of Speedos or full suit and boxer shorts. And so they have this completely natural naked character, furry wise, except for this random pair of boxers or this random pair of pants or this random pair of Speedos. And usually that's because other parts of their suits are open and visible where they should not be open and visible while they are in a con or while they are out in public. People have their own opinions about first or about mersuits. Some people say that they should only be kept up in the room and brought out for their purpose. Um, a lot of people in the fandom don't like them walking around, especially since they are hugging people, are taking pictures, are touching other furries. Um, so it's it's turned into this big debate. But there are people that look specifically for mersuits. There are people that do mersuit and. For me, it's more of a to each their own. I've obviously got my own opinion about it. I won't share it in this video. Might bring it up in another video, just not right now. Um, but that is a separate type of suit. So do not get confused. If you decide to go buy a pre-made suit and you're on fur buy or something else, if it says mer suit, please know that it has been probably used for some activity, some very adult activity, and you will want to make sure that this is actually what you're looking for. Yes, they can be purposed as fursuits. However, I wouldn't recommend it. And I definitely wouldn't recommend buying a, a mersuit if it's been used. But that's just me. So those are the different types of fursuits. Um, and those are the different types of suits that you'll see within the fandom. Obviously, there's a lot more out there. There's the people that wear the hoodies. There's the people that you know, do this thing and that thing that do the body paint and do the nylon and do the, you know, the leather and the stuff. There's different forms of suits out there, but for fursuits specifically, when you are searching for one, 
or when you're trying to have one made, these are the things that you need to consider. Do you want it to be planty grade? Do you want it to be digi grade? Do you want it to be in ghoulie grade? Do you want it to be more toony? Do you want it to be more realistic? Are you searching for a full suit or are you searching for a partial? And if you do get a partial, will you eventually want it to be made into a full suit? And if so, who's gonna make it? So these are all things to consider. Um, I hope that you actually learned something from this video. Um, and, you know, I just, I'm trying to get back into making videos. I know I haven't been doing it lately and I do apologize, but thank you guys so much for almost 120 subscribers. And I am trying to get better videos for you guys. I do love making these and I want them to be as great a video as possible. Thanks so much for supporting me and my YouTube channel and for messaging, messaging me on my Facebook. I've loved every moment of it. And as always, I will see you all in the next one. So bye you guys.